I recently passed my CCIM exam and now I'm officially a CCIM designee. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Certified Commercial Investment Member, or CCIM for short, is regarded as the global standard among commercial real estate professionals, specifically around investment analysis. It's something that many people desire for career growth, for credibility, or hell, even just for bragging rights, to be honest. But the process to obtain the CCIM designation requires years of experience and education to even qualify to take the exam. Matter of fact, in my class, there were some people that it took them 17 years to complete. So when the exam finally comes around, you definitely want to pass on the first time go. So in today's video, I'll be discussing seven tips to help you pass your CCIM exam on the first try. Hey, it's Michael with CRE Made Easy. And if you're new to this channel, we talk about commercial real estate best practices and tips for success. Now, before we kick it off, be sure to go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now we're gonna skip some of the boring tips like eat before the exam and get a good night's sleep and study more. But it's important to understand that a portion of this will be basic standardized test taking tips because the exam is a timed multiple choice exam. And as we wrap it up, we are going to cover some more CCIM specific topics, so be sure to stay tuned. Now, first, let's cover the exam overview. Now, remember, the exam changes every year. Okay, so my experience may vary from yours, but when I took the exam, it was 80 questions and it was six hours long. Now, this may sound like a lot, but the time goes by extremely fast, especially when you have some complex math problems. All right, and the test will cover materials that you learned in the CCIM core courses. Now, if you're a college student and you're taking one of the CCIM approved college curriculums, then to be honest, I really don't know how it directly translates to the test material. So I'd be sure to ask your professor or a representative over at CCIM themselves. So let's go ahead and get started with the first tip. Tip number one, practice with the tools you will use on the exam. Now, what do I mean by that? So me in my practice and my day-to-day -day practitioner of commercial real estate, I tend to use a financial calculator and Microsoft Excel to answer most of my problems, to build out financial models, so forth and so on. However, CCIM actually provides you with their own Excel calculators. Now, what I like about the CCIM calculators is specifically when you input the information, it already has the formulas in there to produce the outputs that you would need for the exam. So if you're doing your own analysis, it may take you a longer route or it may give you a number that's slightly off than compared to the CCIM exam simple things like rounding the numbers correctly or moving it out to a certain number of decimals. The CCIM calculators do that already. So do not make it more complicated on yourself. Simply understand the tools that they're giving you and practice with those tools for the exam. Tip number two, read the question and the answers first. Now this is just a simple multiple choice exam kind of tip here, but understand as you go through some of those answers may be drastically incorrect. And the question itself may be asking something that's very small in the word problem. So instead of just reading the question and then immediately going into application or solving for something that you're not really sure what the, what the result needs to be, go directly to the answers. And I'm going to give you an example of how a, an answer can be drastically wrong, right? Than the others. So if they ask for something like internal rate of return, an IRR, and one of the answer choices may be 60% while the others are somewhere between the range of 9% to 15%. Well, because it's such a high degree of change, it's likely on a multiple choice exam that it's incorrect, right? One of those variables where it's completely off, it's a high likelihood that it is incorrect. Now that's just a multiple choice one-on-one. However, if we look at an IRR and we understand commercial real estate as a practice, we understand that 60% is incredibly high and that in itself is highly unlikely. So in this exam example, we may simply just be able to cut out the 60% and now we just increased our odds of getting the question correct. Tip number three, answer the easy questions first. Now this is a timed exam, so you wanna make sure that you don't run out of time by answering some of those hard questions first. But there are gonna be a lot of math problems and some of the math problems may require you to solve steps one through three before you're even ready to solve for what the question is actually asking for. And in those times, it may take you 10 minutes. It may take you 15 minutes to complete that problem. 
And if you focus on some of those hard questions in the beginning, you'll find yourself running out of time a lot sooner than you may have been prepared for. So what are some examples of some easy questions? Well, it could be something just as simple as vocabulary. A lot of times they may say, what is the definition of fill in the blank? And if you can go through and answer those fairly quickly, well, now we've got ourselves a leg up, if you will, as far as time goes, because we can save some of those hard ones towards the end. Another little tidbit I'm going to throw in here. A lot of times you may see something like a, a case study question where essentially it's, it's bulk questions for one problem set. So if you spent that 10 to 15 to 20 minutes answering that mathematical problem, well, now you have the answers for the next five or six questions. And so if you save that towards the end, you'll find yourself being able to really kind of focus on the problem at hand. And it gives you uh, a little time bump because you can answer so many questions fairly quick. Tip number four is know your pass number and track it. So this is just a personal tip of mine. I do fairly well at most standardized tests. I, I always have, whether it was in high school or college or whatever the case may be. But one of the things that I've always practiced is I identify the number I need to pass. So let's say, for example, it was an 80 question quiz and you need a 70% to pass. Okay, well, 70% of 80 questions is 56 correct answers. All right, great. So now I know that I need a minimum of 56 correct answers to pass the exam. So what I then do is as I answer questions, I simply track them. And what I mean by track them is if I skip a question or I don't feel comfortable on what my answer is, like I'm not extremely confident, well, then I'm going to go ahead and mark it. And then towards the end, I can simply just say, okay, out of the 80 questions, let me subtract these that I'm not really comfortable with, or I've already skipped them and see what my remainder is. And what that remainder will tell you is essentially, if you passed, then you can be more comfortable with dealing um, with those mathematical problems or those problems that you don't know, right? You can use some of the more standard test taking tips, such as cross out the, uh, the questions or the answers that are drastically different where you feel like they're not going to be the answer. Great. So you can increase your odds by choosing, um, you know, between two answers instead of four, so forth and so on. This for me also helps reduce stress and it gives me a tangible tracker. Now, let's be honest, you know, test just in general, especially a test of this degree can be pretty nerve wracking, even if you do feel comfortable because you do not want to fail. But nonetheless, having that tracker there and seeing where I feel confident in my answers allows me to kind of relax throughout the process, which is also very important while taking the exam. Tip number five, RTDQ. Now, this is something that one of our instructors kind of coined, but what it means is read the darn question. Now, this alludes back to the other tip where I said, read the question and the answers first, but it is extremely important to understand what the question is actually asking you. As you may already be familiar with, a lot of word problems may give you a ton of information, most of it, which may be irrelevant to what the question is ask, actually asking, right? And I'm going to give you a quick example. Let's say they give you a ton of numbers, um, NOI, cap rate, purchase price, all this. But when you get to the actual question, it simply says, what is the NOI, right? And so now you can go back and you can just answer it in maybe two seconds versus trying to solve a problem that may not even exist. Now I am guilty of this. I actually took this exam and I read the question and I knew what it was going for. And I already knew how to do the math. And so I went and I did the math and let's just say it took me five minutes and I got the answer of what I thought they were asking for. And then I go to the question and it simply asked me a, a statement that said, Hey, explain this to me or what does this actually mean to the investor? And so it was more of an interpretive question instead of an actual mathematical problem. So be sure that you actually read that question and you understand exactly what they're asking. Tip number six, Practice solving math problems in reverse. Okay, when you see a math problem, you may only have partial information. For example, they may say, um, here is the rent, now I need the NOI, right? And with that partial information, obviously it causes you to do some math to come up with the solution. But if you only know one direction to actually do that math problem, well, if they ask you in reverse, you may be in trouble or from a different angle. And so you want to make sure that you're practicing these problems in all directions so that you feel comfortable with anything that they may throw at you. And I'll give you an example of a math problem uh, where this may apply. 
So in order to find the value of a property, many of you may know that you have to divide the NOI or the net operating income by the cap rate. Okay. Well, if you're given the value and the cap rate during the problem, how would you solve for the NOI? Now, in this situation, you would just simply have the value multiplied by the cap rate to come up with the NOI. But now you can see how they can simply just word the question differently and solve or force you to solve this problem in a different manner. And now we're on tip number seven, which is know what is on the exam. Wouldn't you hate to study for something and then realize that it never showed up on the exam at all? And it's really important to understand how the CCIM exam is kind of is curated. I mentioned it changes every year. However, you do review things during the course concept review portion, which is the CCR for short, because it prepares you specifically for the exam itself. Right now, understand in order to even get to the CCR, you have to complete the four core courses of the CCIM program. You have to complete your electives and you have to submit your portfolio and have it accepted for you to qualify for the exam before you can even register for the CCR. Now, during the CCR, it's maybe a, a four day class, maybe a three day class, maybe virtual, maybe in person. But what it's going to do is cover the material out of those four core classes that will be on the exam. And you're gonna have a live instructor there and they'll be help answer any questions, but it's not really a time to teach, it's a time to review. So now let's think about this. If it's in the CCR that's meant to prepare you for the exam, then you must be prepared to see it on the exam, okay? Now you're not going to see everything you've learned over those core courses, but whatever that year decides to have on that exam, it will be in the CCR. So that's going to be your first step. Be sure that you review that, that CCR manual or you pay attention in those classes because that is what you can expect to see on the CCIM exam. You don't want to be wasting time on things that are not in that CCR because you're afraid that it may show up more likely than not. It will not show up. It's, it's less likely. Is there a chance? Probably, but that's not what the exam is really designed for. The exam is not designed to make you fail. It's really designed to test your competency in these specific areas. So make sure that you study what is in that CCR and that is what you use to base what you're going to practice on the exam. So if the CCIM designation is in your sights, then please go ahead and rewatch this video and put some of these tips into practice. It will greatly reduce some of the stress, also the time commitment that you have on the exam. It's always better to finish a little early and then be able to go back for a review, in my opinion at least. Now, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a like and be sure to share this with anyone that you may know who may be interested in the CCIM path as well. And go ahead and leave a comment with any questions that you may have below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.